Hello. My presentation is about the European project AgiLink. Uh, my name is Herman Schoorlemmer. I'm working for Wageningen University and Research uh, from the Netherlands. And um, in this project AgiLink, we have six living labs. And in these labs, we develop innovation, uh, innovation support services. And we do that together with farmers, with advisors, with researchers. Um, two of these labs, the one in Norway and one in um, the Netherlands, they are um, focused on, on topics related to, uh, to soil. And I like to present them shortly and together with some tips and tricks and, and do's and don'ts that we have learned in our project. So first I start with the Dutch Living Lab. In this Living Lab, uh, we work together and uh, this lab results of, has resulted in a, what we call a nitrate tour focused on the awareness of farmers on their own influence on uh, nitrate leaching and we developed a decision support for catch crops. Finally, uh, with the ambition to have impact on more sustainable maize cultivation in the Netherlands. Um, in fact, we are dealing with a complex challenge with um, public goals and, and private goals. Yeah, so we have to, uh, to, to find uh, solutions to, uh, to meet them. And we work together in this lab with farmers, with advisors, with contractors and researchers. And um, yeah, let's say especially these contract workers, you have to think about that the maize production in the Netherlands is uh, mainly on dairy farms and uh, uh, a majority of the field work is done by contract workers so it's necessary to involve them in the, in the living lab um, the lab resulted in what i call a nitrate tour in this tour farmers measure nitrate in the fields or in the water and that's followed by discussion with a wider group and so it's focused on in, in improving the awareness about uh, the situation. The decision support for catch crops uh, in this situation, we, um, we organized a number of co-creation sessions with a uh, range of uh, stakeholders. And we realized, of his, we, we saw that, um, uh, let's say many of the stakeholders have a similar interest. There is a common ground for development, but, um, at the end, uh, um, uh, some of the stakeholders developed their own tool um, that had to deal with competition between advisors, between um, uh, contract workers. So they want to have their own tool uh, that also um, was easily uh, linked up to their own um, workflow. Uh, the second lab is in, the, in Norway, and that lab is about crop rotation. And the result of this living lab was that this crop rotation is now on the advisory agenda uh, with our ambition that it would um, uh, be part of uh, new advisory services. And, all, and besides that, there is an approach developed uh, for cooperation between farmers on this topic. And finally, with the ambition uh, that it in, uh, result in an improved environment and increased value for farmers. So in this living lab, uh, we work together with the Norwegian advisory organization, advisors, farms, researchers. And we organized their uh, three pilots with arable farmers and with uh, dairy farmers. And the result of this, this lab is uh, our number of, of manuals, reports, for example, on crop rotation, uh, and also one on uh, the development of an advisory service including drafts for contracts between farmers and advisors. So we learned a lot in these living labs, and not only in these two, but also in uh, uh, the four other ones. And based on that, I have some, some do's and don'ts for living labs. Um, uh, let's say, first of all, uh, it's important to be realistic about the living lab. And so, uh, this living lab approach, uh, it's quite hot, uh, but 
uh, be realistic and uh, it's not a solution for all problems. Yeah? Uh, an important do is to spend serious time on motives and positions of stakeholders. Uh, you want to engage stakeholders, you want to engage farmers, so take them serious and spend time on their motives. Um, we realized that, that uh, there is often an other problem behind the, the, the first prob problem, and so it's good to dig into it. Um, related to that, it's important not to start with a predefined solution. In all our six labs, uh, we had to adapt to the situation. We had to change our plans. Um, so um, it's important to be open, to be flexible. And in fact, the, the, the main reason is that if you want to co-create and work together with others, then you have to keep in mind that uh, that will influence your solution. And it will influence uh, the result of it. It's also important that your financer understand this. So you cannot start with a blueprint. Or yeah, you could you could start with a blueprint for an approach, but you have to keep in mind that sometimes you have to make two steps forward and one step back, or vice versa. Um, okay, I will not discuss them all. Of course, this one, it's important to have good facilitation skills. And also this last one, uh, don't use confusing or abstract language. Um, just an example, the word living lab. Um, yeah, if you invite farms to, to join a living lab, um, not of all of them are enthusiastic about it. Yeah, because uh, uh, we heard that some of them got an, an association with being a rabbit or a guinea pig to be in a living lab. So it's better to ask them, do you want to join us to solve a problem and at least to solve one of your problems? Okay, then I come to my last slide. Uh, our lessons and um, uh, experience we, we have put together and uh, based on that, we worked out an online course. We do that together with the Open University. And this online course will be ready in spring next year. So if you are interested, you're willing, if you're happy to uh, to join uh, this uh, this course. Okay, this is about my presentation, and I like to uh, to find to uh, to stop now. And I, if you have questions, I like to hear about it.